to another episode of the NPH Hour here on News Talk, Saga 960 AM. As always, I'm your host, Jason Tom, excited about the month of June, which brings with it the guarantee of some Canadian basketball content here at home with both the Canadian Elite Basketball League returning to the floor later this month, followed by our men's national team hosting an Olympic qualifier in Victoria, British Columbia. But first up, is the Canadian Senior Women's National Team, which will get back on the court in about a week at the FIBA America Cup in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The top three teams from that tournament will qualify for the 2022 World Cup of Basketball, but for Canada, it's a big chance for some high-level competition before they compete at the Olympic Games just six weeks later. Women's basketball finally seems to be getting the respect it deserves and the timing is right for Canada's women's team to take center stage when they not only have some of the best talent the program has ever seen, but also some of the best people that want to take on the title of role models and mentors to the next generation of players coming behind them. Kayla Alexander is one of those people and she took pen to paper, literally in order to make sure young players know her story anytime she takes the court wearing the red and white. Kayla Alexander is one of 17 Canadian women who are currently at the Raptors training complex in Tampa, Florida for one of the last steps before the senior women's national team competes in their third straight Olympics. Kayla, I just want to ask you, how are you feeling after what has been a crazy year around the world and now being back around your Canada basketball family for this home stretch? Uh, the first two words that come to mind are excitement. Just excited to be back in this environment um, with these ladies competing, um, trying to build on what we had 15 months ago. Um, and thankfulness, because I know that it's been a tough 15 months. Life in general has a way of teaching us these different situations. Um, but I'm sure for those who hadn't had to deal with it or haven't had to experience it, COVID was like a very unpleasant wake up call. Like, yep, like this is life. It's not fair sometimes. Um, we got a little bit of a taste of that, unfortunately, when I was playing in Belgium. So our team went undefeated all season, um, won all of our um, league games for Belgium. We get to the finals and then seven of the 12 of us um, go out with COVID. So because of that, even though we've managed to stay healthy all season long, we get to the finals. And because um, we literally only had six, no, five healthy players the day of the game, we had to forfeit. So that was just another example of just how life can just be unfair at times. And it's still, it still burns a bit. I'm still trying to like let it go, <laughs> but um, that's life. So um, you learn, you deal with it and you keep moving forward and it makes you more appreciative of everything. And um, yeah, that's, Unfortunately, that's life. But sports, when, I think sports are great when it, te when it comes to like teaching you um, about um, life skills and just dealing with what life brings at you. For those that don't know, the WNBA season runs opposite of the season overseas. You're drafted eighth overall in the 2013 WNBA draft. Over the next five years, you played over 330 games over that span. And, and then I'm trying to do some math and figuring you practice probably three or four times a week. So that would be about a thousand practices over that period of time as well. What did you learn about going forward? Okay, maybe I have to take care of myself a certain way going forward. Okay, so it was year 2016, 2017. I was playing in France with mm -hmm. Bourges. It was a Euro league team. So we played in our French league and we played it against other countries too. So we were traveling to Russia. Um, where else did we go? Hungary, different countries. Um, after, and it was a long season too. We made it right before the championships. Um, and then after that, I had one day at home and then I had to report to uh, the WNBA team, which was the San Antonio Stars at that time. Went through the season, played, and my body was tired. I was like, okay, Kayla, you need to take a little break. You're tired. But then um, I got the offer. I got drafted by, um, for the Korean League. And I was like, Kayla, you can do this. Just five months. You got this. Um, it's good money too. So just, just dog it out. And then you can have your break. You'll have like good two months. Um, two and a half months in, I was like, nah, I can't do it. <laughs> like, my body was, I was just exhausted uh, mentally, physically, emotionally. 
it was so bad. Like I was usually at, it takes a lot for me to be unhappy overseas. Like I'm very easygoing. I was on the phone, like crying with my parents. Like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Like I don't, like I was just, I, everything I had in me was just gone. Like I just had nothing left to give. So I spoke with the team. They are incredibly gracious. Um, they were like, yeah, it's okay, go home. So I ended up leaving that team early. You can love what you do. Like I love playing ball. I love being able to travel and like, I love the competitiveness. I am constantly learning and constantly being challenged that allows me to travel and all that good stuff. But you can do what you love and still get burnt out at times too. Like you need to be able to have rest in between. And that's something that I learned because I'm just like, I shouldn't be getting burned out here. Like, this is, you enjoy this. This is the dream. But no, nah, my body was like, no, <laughs> we need a break. When you're chasing your passion, sometimes you can get focused on it, hyper focused. And like you'd mentioned, just be like, oh, well, this is what you've been working towards. So, you know, wh why you need a break. Um, but, but obviously, it's something that you need to know. And I think it's because of this passion for the game that, you know, or, or maybe magic, as you would call it. As as you mentioned with the with the magic of basketball, which is the a book that that you wrote alongside your sister and illustrated as well, telling your story in the sport, it must have been a challenge to put yourself out there like that. B but did the need to get a book like this in front of little girls, simply out and little boys, simply outweigh any insecurities that you had? So yes, it took a lot. It, it was a little daunting and nerve wracking to actually like put that out there, like writing a book and putting it out for the world to criticize and say, Oh, this is great. Or, Oh, this is not very good. You can't, you um, can't take it back after it goes out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Once it's out there, it's out there. <laughs> it's for the world to decide now. Um, so that was very daunting if I'm being honest. Um, and this is an idea that I had in my head for so long. Like I had, uh, been writing in my journal about it. I've been talking to my family and friends about it. And then finally I was like, Kayla, stop talking and just do it. And I think a part of that was the fear of what if it's not good enough. Um, but I was like, Kayla, you can't, you can't live like that. You just gotta, you gotta do it if you, and I always tell um, the young girls who I mentor and communicate with, like, don't let fear stop you, like, or failure stop you. I've had my fair share of failures in life. Like, put yourself out there, try new things. If you fail, okay. You learn one way how not to do it, or you can learn. There's always something that you can learn um, in those instances. So I try really. I'm trying to live what I preach and like just doing things. Don't let failure and fear hold you back because that's like that's not not living. Like you lose out on so much when you let fear stop you. I had the story like I was, I was drawing on my life experiences. Um, I love to draw, so I knew I'd be okay with the illustrations. But when it comes to writing, God gifted my sister with words. Mm -hmm. Like she has a beautiful way. Of putting words together. The book rhymes because of her. So we did it together and I really enjoyed working with her. It was, it was great. Um, and that's how it came to be. And then as far as the story, um, just drawing again from my life experiences, uh, it's so much bigger than basketball. Like basketball is so much bigger than like learning how to dribble the ball, learning how to shoot it, putting the ball in the hoop. Um, it's the life skills and the magical gifts that it gives you, whether that's self-confidence, um, teamwork, friendships. In the book, I talk about Nikki. She's the one who actually got me into playing basketball. We, we're still friends. We met when I was like 12 years old. I'm 30 now. We're still cool. I'm actually working on a business together. Um, just different things like that. The gifts of uh, education, of travel, um, of career. Like there's so many great things that basketball can give you, whether you choose to play for fun at the college level or at the pro level. And I wanted to illustrate that and show that to young girls and young boys that the options are endless when it comes to sports and that there is real power in sports. So you want to be a teacher. You've written a children's book. You know how much, you know, this teamwork and, and sport can help young kids. And, and I want to switch it over now. You have a younger brother, Kyle Alexander, who is making his way uh, overseas now as well. And, and you, you have a couple of years on him, so you have a little bit of experience to be able to help him out. And now he's going to be moving into the Tampa complex uh, with the men's team as he's on the invite list there as well. Not too many times that's happened for Canada in the past. Uh, you know, I'm sure you're probably a little tough on him as, a little, as an older sister, but maybe how proud are you, are you of your little brother and what he's been able to do with the sport as well? Yeah, I'm so proud of him. So Kyle and I, we're five years apart. So we've always been missing each other in aspects of life. So when I was in high school, he was still in elementary school. When I leave high school, I'm in college now. He's just getting to high school. 
I'm leaving college, I'm going to play pro, and he's just getting to, uh, to college. So we were always passing each other. Um, but I feel like for the first time now, we're like in the same stage of life, like we're in that post uh, schooling now in our professional lives. So um, it's been great um, being able to uh, relate and to share experiences. I'm also super proud of how far he's come. I remember when I was at Syracuse and our family would come up to support, watch games. Kyle had no interest in basketball. Like he was just focused on his computer games and skateboarding and I think soccer at the time. And then it wasn't until he was like 16 years old. I come home one summer, I'm look, looking up at him and my dad's like, okay, this is enough. You're playing basketball. Um, it ended up working out really well because Kyle ended up enjoying it now that he was like older and playing. Um, but just to see the growth over from 16 to now, um, he's taking tremendous strides. And during COVID, I think it was after the bubble, um, we both were able to be home together and we're getting some training in and actually having time to like actually train with him, get some workouts in, just have like these conversations, um, just seeing where his mindset was at, like how, like how focused he was and mm -hmm. attention to detail. I was like, oh, wow, Kyle, like, wow, this is amazing. Like, you come a long way. It was nice to bond with him on that level. So um, the journey's been interesting, but fun. Uh, yeah, we've had some really cool experiences of both being in the bubble, then we we're both playing overseas this year. Um, but yeah, I'm very thankful. Uh, life has a funny way of working things out. So, What would your advice be to maybe either a parent with a young kid or talking directly to a young kid, which I know you do uh, very often as a mentor, coming out of this now hopefully soon you know how that they can kind of tackle this going forward and maybe how they can try to find a silver lining out of all of it the first thing that comes to mind is give yourself some grace because i had to give that give myself some grace too like and when i say that i mean okay we haven't had access to the gym to get shots up to compete at the level that you're used to competing at um, and let's be real, playing basketball, doing your own individual workouts, going for runs versus actually playing five on five is totally different. Nothing prepares you for playing basketball, like actually playing basketball. So in that sense, you haven't had access to that for how many months now? Give yourself some grace. You're not, you're probably not going to be where you were when you um, get back, or you're probably going to be a little frustrated. Um, maybe you have to get some rest off. Be, give yourself again, some grace, be patient with yourself. Because again, we've all been in this situation where we haven't been able to do what we want to do over a amount of time. Um, but at the same time too, realize that the little things do add up. So even if you couldn't play physical five on five, if you took that time, maybe five minutes a day, just working on your ball handling, whether it's in the basement or in the garage or outside, um, lying on your bed, doing some form shooting, going for little runs. If you were finding ways to make the most of whatever situation you had, I promise you those little things do add up. It's a little drop in the bucket and it, it'll, it'll add up, I promise you. So um, keep doing the little things, but then also when you get back out there, give yourself some grace, give yourself some time to get back to where you want to be at. That's great advice, Kayla Alexander, Syracuse grad, WNBA veteran, 350 plus games played professionally and an author illustrator who will hopefully soon add Olympic medalists to her resume. A lot of work still ahead, uh, but thank you so much for joining me on the NPH Hour and getting the word out. And uh, I'm sure that that book will end up in a lot more hands over the next little while. Thank you so much for having me. I didn't even know it's been that many games. <laughs> <laughs> I never did the math, but yes, this is an absolute pleasure. So I hope whatever I said, maybe one little thing resonated with somebody. Oh, that's how clean. One second, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Now, I chose to end the interview right there because that is the life of a professional athlete in a nutshell. And another reason why I appreciate the time all of these athletes give me on this show because... Their downtime is very limited. You can order a copy of The Magic of Basketball at KaylaAlexander.net, and I truly believe this is a book that should be in every school library across Canada. And Kayla actually had a chance to share that book with kids in Senegal on a trip there last year with the Canadian Olympic Committee. There is no telling who she and her sister will and have inspired with their words. We have more on the way. Next is Dwayne Notice from the Hamilton Honey Badgers of the Canadian Elite Basketball League who talks about the adversity he has faced and how it has helped him become a better player and person. That's next on the NPH Hour here on News Talk Sonic 960 AM.